Now that House of the Dragon is here, we have many questions. Rhaenyra, will you ever sit on the Iron Throne? What kind of havoc will Daemon Targaryen unleash now that he has been expelled from the city? What time will there be more dragons? Hello again! In this video, we will be telling you the importance of House of the Dragons council meetings. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, you can do so by clicking here. One of its main complaints was the preference for spectacle over the narrative in the latter two seasons of HBO's Game of Thrones. Although deep fantasy is a crucial component of George R. R. Martin's source material, Game of Thrones stood out from the other medieval fantasy tales because of its focus on the political drama. It wasn't all violence, bloodshed, and dragons. We witnessed clever folks scheming against one another. Unfortunately, as Game of Thrones neared its climax, these subtleties of Westerosi politics started to fade. The series lost sight of what had initially made it so distinctive and the decisions made by the characters were no longer well-founded. In Season 2, Tyrion Lannister, played by Peter Dinklage, discovers his spy by offering Sansa Stark three alternative husbands, Sophie Turner. Tyrion's lying was more gripping than any White Walker battle scenes in Season 8. However, House of the Dragon has so far shown that it has taken lessons from the errors committed in the final two seasons of Game of Thrones. The focus on the familial strife within the Targaryen clan is maintained in the second episode, The Rogue Prince. After the passing of his wife, Queen Amma Arryn, King Viserys I, Paddy Considine, is still inconsolable. The council advises Viserys I to consider marrying a new wife to preserve his bloodline. The small council meetings provide a look into Viserys' rule. In Game of Thrones, the small council meetings provided the background for the series of events. House of the Dragon hasn't yet surpassed Game of Thrones in size. King's Landing serves as the primary setting for the first two episodes. These talks between Viserys and his circle of advisors are crucial in comprehending the political status of the capital, because we haven't seen what's happening in the rest of the universe, outside of a few fleeting glances of the Stepstones. The series maintains concentration by not switching between locales, demonstrating how unaware Viserys I has become of what is happening in the kingdoms he commands. Viserys I also reveals more about himself through engaging with his council, which helps us understand him better. Viserys I is weak because he was unprepared for a family tragedy. Sir Otto Hightower, played by Rhys Ifans, may start laying the groundwork for his scheme to seize the crown. Viserys I isn't mature enough to recognize that Otto's words of consoling comfort and encouragement to the king in his hour of uncertainty are deceitful. Otto quietly tells the king that Alicent, Emily Carey, his little daughter, would make a lovely bride. Politics are being played out right now, making House of the Dragon thrilling. The king's marriage is not only a critical plot point, but also a sensitive one. After her father designated her as his heir, Rhaenyra, played by Millie Alcock, had just started to gain more self-assurance. In many ways, Viserys I's very thought of taking a new wife so soon is insulting. It implies that he doesn't trust her to hold the throne, and that he is prepared to move past his wife's passing for political reasons. It perplexes Rhaenyra. What are the advantages of occupying the Iron Throne if a ruler cannot wed for love? The Council decides the future succession to the throne. In the dramatic epilogue, as he confesses his plans to wed Alicent, Rhaenyra's faith in her father's mental clarity is severely undermined. His council is shocked by this, and reacts with the usual level of fury. The marriage of Viserys I and Lena, the daughter of Lord Corlys Valerian, played by Steve Toussaint, makes sense, because it would bring together two critical houses. The council acknowledges that Otto's corrupting influence has affected the king. The lack of time devoted to illustrating how characters move from place to place was another major problem with the latter seasons of Game of Thrones. A correction is provided by House of the Dragon, foreshadowing the pivotal confrontation between Rhaenyra and Daemon, played by Matt Smith in Dragonstone. During their meeting, 
Rhaenyra suggests to her father that she could fly to Dragonstone and retrieve the stolen dragon egg. The king forbids it because of the risk. Rhaenyra, who can see that her father has abandoned all reason, will heed Otto's advice. Through his encounters with the council, Corlys, the warrior known as the Sea Snake, reveals more about himself. Despite his reputation as a fearless sailor, Corlys is compelled to stay out of the fray when Viserys I declines to dispatch his fleet to destroy the crab feeder. This infuriates Corlys. He's a man of action, and not being able to safeguard the critical region is unfathomable. It was clear from the pilot that Corlys was ready to support Daemon as the king's heir. The king's insulting rejection of marrying his daughter compels Corlys to switch sides and meet Daemon at Dragonstone secretly. If House of the Dragon maintains its current course, it could become one of the few prequels that contextualize and explains the original material. Although House of the Dragon has a vast realm to explore, this does not mean it must have every recognizable aspect of Game of Thrones. It's thrilling to present a different side of Westeros by emphasizing logic, cunning, and politics. Let's talk about the tiny balls that Small Council has. House of the Dragon is set during a more orderly period in Westeros' history, unlike Game of Thrones, which frequently included rowdy Small Council meetings. At this point, the Targaryens have been in power for over a century, and have established certain institutional niceties. It appears that one of them is the Marbles. Each member of the small council signals their readiness to conduct business by placing their ball in a small dish on the council table when they meet. The Marbles all sit on a large container in the middle of the table, as seen in the image above when the council is not in session or someone is missing. This is a show invention rather than something from George R.R. R. Martin's books. We now understand how it happened. The small balls were created by production designer Jim Clay and set decorator Claire Nee Richards, according to The Hollywood Reporter. According to Richards, it symbolized the council was entering and participating in the discussion. From there, showrunner Ryan Condal swiftly joined in, drawing a comparison between it and the use of time cards by modern employees to report for work. Everyone arrives at work and punches in. It was pretty great, in my opinion. It's a way of picturing the set formality of the small council room. We ought to have nice things in this world, because it is enjoyable. It's good to see instances of the crew adding stuff because they enjoyed it. After all, House of the Dragon has stayed relatively faithful to Martin's text. Condal also revealed to THR that he loved the small council moments on Game of Thrones and wanted to incorporate many of them into House of the Dragon. But he soon learned that it's more complicated than you may expect to write scenes with many people chatting while seated around a table. And that's all for this video. We'll be back real soon with another interesting video just for you. Don't forget to like and share if you enjoyed. See you all real soon.